This show is brought to you by NatureBox. Say goodbye to weird mystery ingredients and start snacking confidently with NatureBox. Visit naturebox.com slash joey to get 50% off of your first box. That's naturebox.com slash joey right now. Go there right now and get the right snacks for 2016. It's naturebox.com slash joey. I'll give you one to go to. To get 50% off of your first box. Show is also brought to you by onnit.com. Go to onnit.com and use code word CHURCH to save 10% on all of their great optimization products like Alpha Brain and New Mood and Shumtech Immune and Shumtech Sport. And we'd like to welcome a new sponsor. This show is brought to you by Datsusara. That's Datsusara. D-A-T-S-U-S-A-R-A. Extremely qual- extremely high quality, functional gear made with hemp textiles. They have bags, geese, rash guards, and much, much more. They have bags. Go to Datsusara.com right now and check them out. Kick that motherfucking mule, Lee. This show is brought to you by Nick. Say goodbye to weird mystery ingredients and start snacking constantly with Jesus Nick. Christ Visit Almighty. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh shit. May 9th, motherfuckers. Post Mother's Day. The church of what's happening now. Monday. The day the devil was buried at sea and fucked in the ass and lit on fire and dropped off at Cosby's house. Oh shit. Owen Benjamin. What's up? Lee Syatt. Uncle Joey. Get those shoes on, bitches. Oh shit. Pump out those moves, cocksuckers. What? 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 What's the story, Lee Syatt? I'm doing good. Oh, my God. These stores are kicking in fast. Yeah, yeah. Right? We're not fucking around. I've been <laughs> fermenting these. You know what I'm saying? These have been sitting in the dark. Owen Benjamin, what's happened? Just uh, the stars are kicking in pretty hard. Fuck yeah. And I wouldn't even let you eat the second one because I know these things smack people around really hard. But it's Monday night. We've got to kick out the jams, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> great weekend last week, and I hope everybody's weekend was great. Lee Syatt, what'd you do? I had a, kind of an easy weekend. Like I, Paula's on a cruise with her mom. For, she's finishing law school. So just kind of hung out. Just watched. Uh, I watched the Dice Man Cometh after after that podcast on Wednesday. That was great. And uh, yeah, that was. I had a pretty low key weekend. How about yourself? Me too. I didn't do dick. I did a spot Saturday night. Decided that I hung out with the family. Month Sunday, I want to go to Mother's Day. She went to church. I went to jujitsu. I called her. And she goes, "I don't feel good. Come home." So all our plans were bro- broken because she gets some migraine headaches. And that was my fucking weekend. That was. I didn't do shit. I wrote a little bit. Did a couple jumping jacks. Nice. And went down to the fucking comedy store. What else you want from me? That's what you do. People expect that you went on jet set and, oh, I went down to the Bahamas and hung out with Pete Diddy. I don't do none of that shit. It's I amazing how myself. many people do that, though, like on a weekly basis. They're like, oh, I'm going to San Diego for the weekend or I'm going up north. It's like an every weekend thing out here. Yeah, it's basically like, I'm going to go sit in a little tube in the sky because that's what you're doing. You're like traveling most of the vacation. If you do like a one-nighter, what's the point? It's like a nine-hour flight for like to sit at a beach that just looks like your beach, right? Two days. I ne- oh, I don't know. I never had all that energy. Yeah. I didn't have all like when you grew up in the East Coast, you always have that weekend outing place. For us, it was the Jersey Shore, you right? Know? And uh, there was one summer where I would go down, but it, I, it always felt like too much work for me. You know, at least that's what it did for me. There's a lot of people that say lifestyle, man. You know, Diagostino's sister, she's out every fucking four nights a week. She's 30. I don't know how people do it. But I did, I'll sit here now and go, I don't know how people do it. I did the same thing, just in a smaller frame. I bought a 12-pack and went home and snorted a gram of Coke by myself. So what's the fucking difference? You're still killing yourself in one way or another. It's just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I've just not never been that. That scares me. Like, I just the, I'm a very... I don't want to say antisocial, but I like being by myself. And the thought of being out, like, I, I never understood that in college when they went out four nights a week. I I would never want to be out with people four nights, like, in, in a big bar or something. It's, I don't know. It freaks me out a little bit. Yeah, I'm too tall to go places. Like How tall are you now? Six, seven. Damn. Oh, damn it. So it's like, yeah, people are always bumping into me and, like, thinking I'm trying to fight them when I'm just standing there. Would you, would you, did you used to go out a lot when you were younger? Kind of, not really. I think just doing comedy. I've done comedy now right. since college, so I was always uh, traveling, so I never really looked forward to more. It's almost like our job is people's party, so it's like you don't live in the frat house. You know, you kind of just kind of go. 
it makes sense. I don't know. I was like a, I went to get tacos last night. My wife says, well, I want to go get tacos. And I went to that cactus place. And next to this cactus is a bar called the Starlight Lounge. And I was just waiting there. You know, the phone rang one time. A friend of mine called Salami called. I talked to him. But the whole time I was watching the bar. And it's like there's a bar culture. There's a nightclub culture. There's all these cultures that that you entertain. Music, comedy culture. There's right. people that go to improv every night. You know, there's people that do, you know, when I was growing up, I went to a happy hour on Tuesdays. I went to a ladies' night on Wednesday. The whole point of the evening was getting fucked up when I was growing up. When I was growing up, it was to, to snort blow and eat pills and fucking pass out somewhere. Yeah, I, you know. And yeah, pussy was somewhere in there. But we went out just to fucking rave and or rage, whatever that word is, and have a good time. But then there's that culture, that bar culture, that dirty, dingy bar culture, which I have nothing against those bars. I grew up in one of those bars. My mom had one of those bars. But that culture always bothered me. That certain, they're out there smoking, and their body language, you know, they got the hats on, and they got the the, the, out, the bar outfit on, and their body language is like, look at us. We're partying. We're doing something nobody, like, it, it just had this weird thing. Like, they had the four dudes come out and smoked, and three other dudes, and the token black guy came out, because every of those bars in Studio City have a token black dude. Yeah. You know, like, we we like black people. We let Hank, Hank <laughs> hang out in here. You know, those type of fucking morons. Right. That you could see right through it. But it's just... Looks it like was, an old Navy commercial. Yeah. It was it's just oh, like yeah. it's got everybody's represented. Everybody's represented. It's like, hey, I'm the Arab guy, but I'm just like you guys. Yeah, and, and, and they're drinking, and I still remember being stuck in those bars. Like, when I was a kid, like, to go get drugs or something in the afternoon and having to listen to their small talk used to make me fucking sick. Even as a kid sitting in my mom's bar, I would look at those people and go, how do they sit there all fucking day? Yeah, and it's like performative. It's like they're doing it to be seen doing to it. To be seen doing it. Because if you really love booze, you just sit home and drink. Yeah, they go to a bar and they talk and they plan trips to go fuck. And then they, you know, their whole conversation the next day is how whack they got the night before. Like, how was it in here after I left? Oh, we got whacked. Billy came in and bought shots for the house. Really? That tight fuck. And you sit there and you're like, Jesus Christ, what are they talking about? What the fuck are they talking about? They have this fake care. Like, you know, well, I don't know. You know, Lee comes in here and he drinks 16 doubles. I've never seen him eat. He's a fucking alky. You know, what the fuck is your problem? You're an alky. It, it's just, it just, just, it's always driven me fucking crazy. And yesterday I saw it and it reminded me. I remember going home and eating and telling my wife, God tell you what, I never understood that bar culture. Like, I never liked it at all. And I remember still hanging at bars, and like in the mid 80s, like just living in Jersey and going to those dumb little bars in the neighborhood. And I remember leaving there going, The thing I'm happy the most is I don't have to go to those fucking bars no more. Listen to that dumb small talk and the bartender talk. Fuck that noise. You ever work at a bar? Fuck yeah. Yeah. My mom had a bar, so my mom's, my stepdad hated the bar business. Like, he didn't drink. So when you don't drink, you don't understand it. I always wanted to drink. When I came from Cuba, all the TV shows, any TV show, Dick Van Dyke, any TV show you watch always had booze on them. And they always had bottles with no label on them. Like, everybody's house in America had an alcohol tray. Right when you walked in the door. Right when you it, walked in the door. It, it used to make me feel weird that I didn't drink. I'm yes, like, Why don't yes. I drink? You grow up going, I can't wait till Owen comes over the house. Mm -hmm. And in those days, people didn't ask. Like, we're not like pussies how we are now. Right. Like, now, and let me get Stoli's short. In those days, people fucking, you walk in my house, oh, and I turn Drink around. Drink this shit. Yeah, I take the glass, I put the ice cubes in, I pour it, and I hand it to you. You wouldn't ask me if it was whiskey or gin or scotch. You would just say cheers. Yeah. And fucking drink it. So who doesn't want to do that? I want to do child. that. I, I want to do that do right that. now. I wanted to fucking do that. <laughs> no, you're not doing that right now because <laughs> then we're responsible for you. <laughs> These stars and alcohol don't mix, I don't think. I've never been able to. I really don't think these stars. Weed and alcohol, alcohol from you know, doesn't really do anything. Yeah, it doesn't. It nulls it out. I think if I smoke first mm -hmm. and drink, I'm I'm done. If I drink first and I smoke, then I get sick. So it was always like a catch twenty two. 
but it was so weird how seeing that yesterday said to me, Jesus Christ, I can't believe I got out of that fucking life, you know, just hanging out at bars. I never really liked it, but growing up, I used to see those people after the effects. Even as a child, I'd see them drunk, and even as a 10-year-old child, I wouldn't let them talk to me. Like, they fucking bothered me. Right. And it bothered me that my mom was doing it along with them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Me and my stepdad would just go, see ya. And we'd get in the car and say, look at those fucking losers. Like, I swear to God, I always <laughs> never liked that shit. Right. And uh, what are you going to do? Everybody, hey, listen, that's what makes the world go around, that we all have different tastes. Yeah, I don't like uh, the, the club club culture, really, either. The club culture. Yeah, that yeah. was weird to me. Yeah. Because it's like waiting in line to then go into a bar. I don't understand that. Like when you wait in line, like people wait in line like three hours to go get the same booze that's at the dive bar. You know, I never understood that. I went, to, I went to all those clubs in New York growing up. You know, I went to studio at the end, though, and like on a Thursday night. I went to Xenon's and all those dumb clubs they talked about. If I said to you I went more than once, I'm lying to you. Even then, they just weren't my, my yeah. cup of tea. I'm doing blow. I want to talk. I can't talk when music's blurring in my ear. So if I talk to you, I got to hit you with a shot of bad breath. And then you talk to me, you got to hit me with a shot of bad breath. All night, you're just smelling bad fucking breath. I didn't like it. I didn't like Why that. does anybody like this shit? I don't like... I, I, when I was 19, like I said, 19 to 22, I went to a couple clubs. After a few drinks, I would dance. You know, but it wasn't like... Listen, now, in those days, let's get something straight. And even back then, Uncle Joey don't wait on lines. Like, that culture is a culture that's destroyed me. Right. Like, I don't get that culture at all. Like, when I go to Austin, I love the barbecue, but I'm not waiting on line. Yeah, you don't wait in that's line. That's not my bag to wait on line and tell people, we waited for an hour. I, I don't Yeah, get like it. Pink's, like the hot dog shit, yeah, is always I, like a crazy line I, no, no, to get a hot dog. I don't do that. that. That place, the breakfast place on Sunset on Fairfax, Yeah. 10 years ago, Lindsay Lohan went in there before one of her trials. So every day you'd go in there, I'd drive by and see a line in front of them. And me and Fabeman, a bunch of us would be going to Duke's, getting a nice cheese omelet with fucking curly cut french fries right. and coke. And I see these mutts waiting on line to get fucking eggs. Waiting on line to get eggs. Waiting on line to get eggs, which anybody can make a fucking good egg and you sprinkle it with whatever the fuck they sprinkle on it. But that whole scene thing. Has Why do never people do that? Because it just it just appeals to their they, instincts. You know the place I'm talking about, the griddle. Yeah. Right across from uh, the Starbucks, it's something, a uh, coffee bean on Sunset and Fairfax. There's a line there. And. 60 yards away, there's a bagel place. That dude will make you a nice bagel on locks. It makes Jews jealous. You understand me? She's from Arabia somewhere. She's over there fucking putting locks on bagels with onions that are fucking delicious. delicious. And there's no line there. No line. Nobody even, or a nice turkey with cream cheese with a tomato. Every time I go in, there's one place. Everything you're saying right now sounds fucking incredible. Oh, delicious. Incredible. I don't yeah. fuck around. So I don't understand why you would stand on that line to tell your friends that. Me and Benjamin went to the griddle today. Oh, my God. It was fucking fun. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you? And I've been there. It's a nice breakfast. But it's not worth the line. No. I, I wouldn't stand on a fucking right. line there. Have you ever had a place that was great and then they changed it to one of those places? I had a breakfast place that was perfect. And then they changed. They added crepes. They, they, they painted everything and they made it look like it's like an old country place. And it was like it was depressing. Was there a line? No, no, there, there was now. It took, it took like three times as long because they changed owners. It was, it's something that that Joey talks to me about a lot. Is like not fi- like don't fix something that's not broken. Like why? Like it's and that's something in my life too. That always, whenever I overreact to something, it ends up like backfiring in my face. Yeah, it's like those species that they'll bring in to kill like a bad species, and then it fucking makes a worse thing. Oh, it's the worst, and it, it like. For, I don't know about you, but for, like in my life, it just destroys things. Like if I, if I'm like, okay, I need to fix this, and so to fix this, I'm gonna go eight hours out of my way to fix, and then it ends up like not even working. And if you yeah. just let things happen, I don't know. It's it's something I've been trying to fix lately because I'll I'll overreact. See, but maybe you're trying to fix the fix thing. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That that and that that's yeah. another point. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're fixing things you want to do eight hours like, out of the way. I don't know. Like let's say you had a. Like a, a, a show, and it's like what you, you were talking about earlier. You you used to fly in a night before, 
and, and get, get ready for radio and, and be all prepared and well rested and then the radio show wouldn't bring you tickets. So now you just you sleep, have a good night's sleep and you go on the next day and it's easier and you get just as many people coming in or more and you don't have that stress of going to LAX at 5 p.m. And, and, and a night away from your family. Like just stuff that you think you need to do but it's the, sim- well, the simpler the better, at least for me. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, even when we first started the podcast, when you and I throw ideas, you come up with a good idea, but it's not a simple idea. You know, I have to do too much work to get to that final result. Right. We got three days, and you're talking about a two-year pro. You know, and that's we all do that. We we uh, you know overreact. That's what yeah. overcomplicate. Yeah, something. It's just. And it's it, it'll it'll ruin something that could be great. I hate my wife's scheduling. I want to fucking choke my wife sometime in the living room because I'll see her do something she could do two days from now, and it wouldn't really fucking matter. You know, it drives me fucking crazy. I always ask her, "Let me see your notebook." Over prepares type thing, or she gets too wound up. Okay. This morning, the chick was coming in to watch the baby. Mondays is the only day Mercy doesn't go to school. Yeah. We bring Juana in, and she helps watch the baby while my wife goes food shopping, and then I sit for a while, and Juana will do some laundry, and then she'll clean a little bit. Juana only comes in on Mondays and Fridays. Guess what my wife is doing at 7 in the morning? Fucking laundry. As you're about to ring Juana in to do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm about to wring her fucking neck. <laughs> I see her emptying trash cans. Friday, we went to lunch. We got food, but it was it was too much food. I cut my steak in half purpo- purposely so I would have breakfast, steak, and eggs for breakfast. Right. So it was a 12-ounce steak. I cut it in half. She couldn't fucking finish her steak. And her mashed potatoes and her fucking asparagus and something else. The day before, we had made spaghetti. Saturday, I said to her, listen, I'm not feeling too good. She goes, what do you want for dinner? I go, there's a steak in there. There's horseradish mashed potatoes. There's this, there's this, there's this, there's this. I don't want nothing. I get up out of bed. I smell fucking food. I go in the kitchen, and I go, what are you cooking? She goes, I made tortilla soup. I go, why the fuck would you make tortilla soup? Now, nobody's going to eat that shit. That's why we had to throw away those four fucking hamburgers. Right. You follow me? She'll say, well, you didn't eat the hamburgers. And why the fuck did you make that if you knew there was hamburgers in there? That's fucking bad scheduling. Yeah, it's like, That's fucking bad scheduling. Totally. You didn't plan the move three days ahead, you know? If you want your life to be easier, you have to cut that fat out. Keep that nut low. Keep that fat lo- out and keep the nut low. And that's what nut. I believe in less movement. I'm 53. I'm halfway done. I got one foot in the grave, one a banana peel. These are the years where you bend over to put your shoes on, all of a sudden you see purple, and next thing you know, you're in a box and they're fucking throwing <laughs> sand on you. So, guys like Owen and myself, we don't fucking know, Owen, when Brad Pitt's doing the movie and some guy slips on a banana peel and gets hurt, and they're shooting the movie in Atlanta for 60 days. So, I, I'm always thinking like that. That I want to be ready for that call. I want to be ready yeah. for that call if I got to leave in three fucking days. So a lot of times I wouldn't do, like right now, Owen, how many years have you lived in L.A.? 13 years. So you're not doing the same shit you did in the beginning when you were here. No. You just said before the show, which I'm not ashamed of saying either, it's a bad habit that we have this. Yeah. Because we would never do this 13 years ago. We would never get a call from an audition at night and go, I'm going. Wake up in the morning, I call Lee and go, Lee, let me ask you something. Where's Susquehanna Street? And Lee will go, that's two hours, and it's always trafficking there. Your audition's at 945. What's your first impulse now? Let me look at this side again. Guest star, Fox. Let me look at the show where it stands. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Number yeah. 18. Fuck it. Hello. Man. Yeah, I woke up with a sore throat. I won't be able to go to my fucking audition. You see things for what they are. When you call me for an audition for an ambiguous character now. He's a homeless guy. Just go in there and be you. Just have no. fun with it. Do me a favor. Where is it? 4.30 down in Santa Monica. Let me answer you a question. Would you send your mother down there at 4.30? No, I wouldn't. And what the fuck are you sending me down at 4.30? Call these people back and say I'm available tomorrow at 11.15. If not, I won't go. And it's a horrible request in our mind. 
but we we uh, what's the what's the word? We pro qualified the fucking thing. For some people, they'd say that we we pre qualified it that we already lost. For some people, like you and I, I look at it and go, "How's this gonna change my life?" Right. How's this gonna change my fucking life? The only thing I'm doing this for is for insurance. That's basically it. I'm doing this right. for insurance so I can hit that number every year to get level one or two. I'm not doing this because I really want to. By the way, people, Owen Benjamin just gave me a look that I recognize. <laughs> it's a look that's telling me. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that crazy high? Yeah, it's, it's hitting you. Yeah. It? Yeah, I'm sorry. Bro. No, but it's cool. Like all your water. story. You like, more water? Because you're such a descriptive talker that everything you're saying, I'm like literally seeing in my head. It's really well, fun. Well, it's just so weird, Owen, that you see things. I look at this and I go, "What is that?" I got this shoots and like I got a call today. Something about Simi Valley. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, right? It's not gonna happen. Yeah. Your radius for travels yeah, going smaller and you're smaller. You're crazy. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> at this point, if it's not at like no, unless you WB listen. in Burbank. <laughs> Unless you're you picking can up, Skype it. Unless I'm picking up an envelope. See me, Valley's not going to work. I'll tell you on Tuesday. That's yeah. where all those cops were for OJ. That's where yeah, they're yeah, all yeah. from. Did right? you see, see that? Valley? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Simi Valley. It's so weird how people call me. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're doing this thing Thursday. I, get, I keep getting this kid on Facebook that hits me up every two weeks. Hi, I got a show down at the Playhouse Theater in Santa Monica at 10 yeah. o'clock at night. Listen, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. It's at Bakersfield in 15 minutes. Yeah, no. it's <laughs> You look at things for what the fuck they are after a while. You know, you look at your schedule. You know what you're going to want to do and what you're not going to want to do. You know, this shoots at Fox. Do I really want to go to fucking Fox? Sit there for four days in one of those fucking cabinets they give you <laughs> that smell like ass and shit. And then put up with this director telling me I can't use that line. You know what? It's weird. It's like it's almost like you go like when you when you when you're poor as a kid and then you start doing better. Then you go back to the trailer park when you become a star. Isn't that kind of funny? Yeah. Like they're living in trailers. Like it's like the, it's like you end up back in a trailer back in a park. Fucking trailer. <laughs> and I love acting. I love all that shit. But at the end of the day, now with the new after rates and shit, you look at this and. You you know what time this is. I'm getting fucked in the ass. Right. I'm getting fucked in the ass with this. Unless this is a role I'm really going to enjoy doing. Or unless, you know, I'm doing a favor. Nine out of ten times, I told Lee a thousand times, my best part of auditioning is booking something. I hate when I have to do the job. I just love booking it. I love That's getting hilarious. a call them saying you booked it. Once I got to go, I got to go to wardrobe tomorrow. Jesus fucking Christ. All that shit bothers me, especially now after being here fucking this long. I'd rather you just see it for what it is, and it's a horrible attitude. I do not recommend it to anybody, but it's the same way in life. You start seeing things for what the fuck they are. You know, as you get older, that boss is really a fucking scumbag. You Absolutely. Know? Why the fuck am I doing this job? I'm going to put away my own money and start my own business doing this. I'm over here doing this, making this guy a millionaire. You start seeing things for what the fuck they are. So, you know, with me, over the years, when you first get here, let's just talk about Hollywood to, to just narrow it down for people. You do all these things in the beginning. You really fall for, you know, how many times have you gotten up, gotten dressed to go to a meeting, and the guy tells you he's got a low-budget, hundred-dollar-day movie, and you got two days on it, and you want to look at the guy and go, so you couldn't tell me this on the phone? Right. Kills. That's not going to happen. I got to eat dinner with my fucking family. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, your I mean, priority shift. So you change. You change yeah. all this shit. And uh, you look at your time. My time in my head, ever since I was a fucking junkie, the time in my head was always valuable. For some reason, it was always valuable. I don't know how people have all this time to... Like when you tell me you take a train downtown... <clears throat> or you take a fucking car ride to go eat dumplings. I, I don't fathom that in my mind. But then I think about when I was 19, I used to take a two-hour drive to get a fucking roast beef sandwich from down to Jersey Shore. Right. And <clears throat> for me, like, the train, well, not so much the driving, but the train is like an example of what I was talking about, like trying to over overthink something. Like, oh, I'm going to take the train to Hollywood to save time and to save $10 on parking. But then you have to wait 20 minutes for the train and then there's 18 stops and there's a thousand people on the train and what you save five bucks so just might as well just drive down there you know it's like these people that take the train over here in north hollywood right 
they walk three blocks to park the same recorder. Why'd you get the car? Right. I, guess, I mean, there's Mercedes back there. They parked BMWs back there. I've had, if I've made a monthly payment to a BMW and Mercedes, I'd have it right next to the train under the fucking cameras where Absolutely. people see that fucking car. But that's just me. I'd figure that into that in my monthly budget. Hold on one second. Let me call fucking Hollywood Transit and see how much it costs to park. So I don't have to act like a fucking yam and park three miles away so I could save 15 fucking cents. I never understood those fucking things. Listen, man, there's so many things you don't fucking understand. And after a while, you go, you know what? I don't even have time to think about it no more. I'm just not going to pay attention to these fucking morons. No. Jesus Christ. What's the matter, Lee? Nothing. I mean, I, I, you're sweating. You, you, you know. I'm, sw- I'm just, I'm just a little high. You're fucking <laughs> red already. What happened, Lee? You're falling apart on me. Paul is gone. She's on a cruise ship eating that fucking death food they give you on there. It's scary. I, I, I didn't want to tell her before she left, but there's a cruise ship right now. Like, I just didn't... Whenever I think of something is going to be fun, I think of what you would say if I told you I was doing it. And after that hot tub thing, I went and I was like, okay, maybe a cruise would be fun. What was the hot tub thing? Hot tub thing. I got in a hot tub on a, at an Airbnb and I got a sty. So, like, like the only I would oh, get the one. He got one a sty. He got fungus on his head. I'd be the only. He I'm, got a fucking. You ever see that commercial with the guy with the shingles? Yeah. He, he comes in and he's like, how are you doing today? He's like, not good. No, that was him. You got it from a hot tub? From a hot tub and fucking because Big Bear. Because he had beat him beat to save 10 bucks like a fucking Puerto Rican. Next time, get in a hotel, and they're fucking justifiable. But you're paying 60 bucks and sleeping in a hotel. What do you think these people do with these Airbnb people? You think they really fucking scrub and dub the house? No. If that person, you know, they'll just put the fucking double sheet on. They won't wipe the top. So if that fucking nasty motherfucker's got lice, now he's living in the floorboard or the headboard. Right, yeah. And that's why I was thinking about cruises. It's like face herpes. Yeah, yeah it's the worst. And then, and then it always everything always happens with Joey, like the day of a podcast. I, I see Joey maybe two, maybe three times a week, and I'll be fine. Like, and the rest of the week I'm fine. The day before I see Joey, I wake up, I'll have like a huge pimple on my like just anything to g- give him an ammunition against me. But like, there's this cruise ship that just docked in Maine with like a quarter of the people had like a fl- the the worst stomach flu, like norovirus or whatever that fuck. And I was like, oh, you can't go on cruises. Yeah, they're kind of like shit boats. They're just full. Of, there's so much shit in a cruise. What do you think an airplane is? Pretty soon people are going to be able to get herpes on airplanes and HIV. They don't clean those fucking things either. No. What do you think they wipe them down in between flights? No. Nah, you ever see a Southwest flight fucking land? You get right back on it. You don't see no smoke coming out of it or no DDT. You see Chinese people coming out with masks and shit. You know, those fucking planes are filthy. Fucking filthy those fucking planes. They don't do dick. Maybe at night they spray them, or on international flights, which I don't know. But I don't. I'm not international, so I don't know what they do on those flights. But I see when American Airlines when your plane has a problem, and also they bring another one from the gate. I don't see people in there rubbing down the seats in first class or in coach or spraying anything. They pick up loose papers and fix the seatbelts, but that's it. Yeah, there's like drool and shit everywhere. Because when you're on a long flight, you get get it dirty. No, I have handy wipes. I got everything. I got a little fucking sprayer with Lysol. I get on. I got my my carry-on. Fuck you. I wipe down the seat. Fuck you. You're going to have to wait, cocksucker. I don't give a fuck. I used to work at a movie theater. They would never clean anything. Like people, All we would do is sweep the popcorn under the seats in front of it. So, look, I, I don't think anyone cleans anything. No, they don't clean dick. And those Airbnbs, a hot tub from 1940. How many think shot, loads were shot in that fucking thing? I see a hot tub in 84. You're safe. Right before the air broke out, you're fucking safe. Pre-hit. But now you got a fucking hot tub. You know, God knows what the fuck's in it, unless it's modern. Right. Yeah, there's some aids hot tubs out there. There is? Well, I mean, there's like some shit where you look at it and you're like, that's a fucking dirty hot tub. Oh, no, those are dirty motherfuckers. Yeah. Those hotel hot tubs? Yeah. That's, you go in there, that's malaria from little kids. Little moms go in there with fucking dirty, filthy fucking kids. Really? I was going to say that uh, hotels would be cleaner because they have to keep them clean. Well, if you go to a fucking, listen, if you go to a Four Seasons, which, you know, I'm not Johnny Four Seasons, <laughs> but if you go to the Four Seasons or one of those high four-star chains, you know, where you're not going to see that many kids. 
You know, when I travel during the week, we, what do we get? Those three stars, whatever the fuck they give us at a comedy club. Yeah, I mean, like, the condos, oh, yeah. those are fucking dirty. Oh, yeah, the condos are fucking filthy. But uh, the hotels that we stay at, if there's kids and they're jumping up and down the pool in the jacuzzi, you got a problem. When you go to those Four Seasons or those higher-end hotels, you don't see that many kids. It's adults and business people doing laps and... We've I've, like we've heard a lot of stories about like the La Jolla condo, but what about like what what are some other condos like that are like throughout the over Cleveland's uh, Cleveland's got an interesting condo. What do they do? It, well, it's just like uh, right across from the strip club, which is across from the Improv, and it's just you go in there and there's just it, some dark shits happening there. You can just feel it. So the Cleveland Improv has a bad condo. Well, I kind of like it just because I, I don't know, it's kind of convenient to shit, but it, it just has that vibe of like. When was the last time you were at Cleveland? Uh, last year, maybe two years ago. Okay, so, okay, so this is the powerhouse right here, right? This is the powerhouse building where Cleveland is. Yeah. The strip club is right here. Okay, it's right across. You have to like walk something right in the r river there. It's on the water. Yeah, it's there. right on the water, yeah. And then you walk this way here and there's a building. And this, that's where the condo still is, like on yeah. the second or third floor. Yeah. But right across from it, there's a little bar. There's that little dingy. It's like, a, yeah, it's like an Irish name or some shit. Yeah. That, yeah, that bar is fucking. That condo's not bad. Yeah, I like it, but. I, got, I used to get fucked up in that condo. But there's just like broken shit. Like there's a broken table. Well, that was 15 fucking years yeah. ago. You know, that was. I, the last time I was in that fucking condo, guess what I watched? The first time I ever watched The Sopranos. So 1999. Wow. Was the last time I was in that fucking con No, I'm lying to you. I was there after The Longest Yard. And I basically went there for three days to get fucking sizzled out of my brain. That was one of the places where when I left the hotel room to take the plane, I was paranoid to even leave the building. Like the whole ride to the hotel, I kept thinking jumping out of the car the strip club they have a free lunch right a prime rib lunch and yeah they it? still have, tell me they still have the prime rib lunch yeah they they definitely have like a, a big food thing going on that's 20 fucking years the first time i went there to cleveland was 1999 i went from miami improv which was like a paradise People doing blow, people drinking, mm -hmm. people fucking in the bathrooms. The bar stayed open till two. It was across the street. I'll never forget. I went. So I was in, I was in Miami. Is that from, Coconut Grove? Coconut Grove. Yeah. This is when Coconut Grove though was Coconut Grove before fucking they turned it into old condos and the cops fucking closed it up. This is when Coconut Grove was, you know, the first time I went to that Miami Improv. It was Tuesday through Sunday, and it was the summer of 99. And the first time I went to that Miami Improv, the way I went, it, it was a condo. Yeah. At that time, they were still putting me in condos, and they put me in this condo. And it was the Tuesday night show. And I got out, and they said, do you want food? And I was embarrassed, and I go, no. And I walked back to the condo, and I stayed in the condo, and I was fucking starving late. And next morning I got up and I walked over and got breakfast at the news. This was, did you ever go there when that place was across the street from it? The news, something news, I forget what it was. And Lee, I was a feature act making fucking four, five hundred dollars a week and breakfast was twenty dollars. My head almost blew up. My head almost blew up, you know. Coconut Grove was a heavy duty area at the time. Heavy fucking duty. I mean, everything, you know, was $3 for a soda. I mean, there was really nothing. Back then, that's crazy. This is crazy, Lee. This was when Coconut Grove was Coconut fucking Grove. You know that hotel up the corner from my Miami Improv? Yeah. At Coconut Grove? That's where the fucking Knicks and the NBA team stay. That's what type of hotel it is up there. Heavy duty security, cameras, valet parking. They had a shield. The only people who stayed there were Richard Jenny. Um, I, I I forget they Miami Improv only had two comics that stayed at that hotel. Everybody else stayed at the Newport or on on, on whatever the fuck it is there. But that Wednesday I went there and again I pulled the same stunt. I left there hungry and I went back. Thursday was an eight o'clock show and I left there again. This night I said fuck you, I'm gonna find the fucking bodega. 
I walked three blocks, Lee, and it was like being in New York City. In what way? People everywhere. It was one in the morning, and there were people fucking everywhere, Lee. Everywhere. Girls dancing, pizza places. I, I, I kept walking the wrong way. I kept walking through a residential area. But if I walked a different way, you know, and all of a sudden I bumped into waiters from the fucking improv and waitresses, and they're making me go to this other bar, and next thing you know, they're telling me if I, I want to buy blow. For three days I sat in that room in Miami with no blow, no booze. I didn't know nobody. And it became this fucking city. It was amazingly, we amazing. And you could, the one bar where they used to hang, you'd get dolphin, mahi mahi, on a fucking seated bun with mayonnaise and coleslaw. You have no fucking idea, Owen Benjamin. Owen Benjamin is starting to see the devil, ladies and gentlemen. I love it. That's my boy out of fucking oh, New fine. York and shit. But the moral of the story was I went from this nightlife the first time because the second time I went to Miami, I was, I was crazy. I went from there to Cleveland to work Cleveland like January 2nd to January, like, 9th. It was like a seven-day Tuesday. Cleveland's probably just as exciting in early oh January. Oh, my <laughs> God, Lee. When I pulled up, it was freezing. There was snow on the ground. I went in, and the goofy dude at the door goes, Psst, come here. He goes, uh, here's some passes. You get free uh, lunch at the strip club. Again, when you're a feature act and you're getting 500 a weekly, a free lunch is a free lunch. It's going to cost you somewhere. It's going to cost you the first time I went in there. These fucking strippers were disgusting. And one of them was cutting the meat. She was big, black. They had a stripper cutting the meat? She was big, black, and fat. And she was cutting the meat herself and putting her fingers in it and eating it and shit. And fucking... <laughs> and the fucking meat was pink. And the potatoes, you know, people were sticking their fingers in the potatoes. I just ran out of there. And that was it. But I had a fucking... There's nothing around there. But if you walk up that hill, if you walk to the corner, and if you walk out of that building and make a fucking left and walk up that hill and make another left and keep walking three blocks up is where you find civilization. It's a Puerto Rican neighborhood. So I bought a couple nickel bags and I bought some fucking food up there. And I didn't know it. That's the second biggest Puerto Rican population in the country is Cleveland because in the 50s they brought Puerto Ricans to work up in Ohio on the car manufacturing. So all those Puerto Ricans stayed there. Not that you give a fuck, but if you ever go to Cleveland, you got a Puerto Rican friend. That's it. That's what I'm telling you. That's the last time I was in fucking Cleveland. But the first time I went, I was in the condo with a headliner. The second time I went, I was the headliner, and I was in there by myself. And I remember watching The Sopranos Sunday night. And like, uh, no, you know how they play the Sopranos during the week in those days, the episodes? Like, they mm -hmm. they play the episode on Sunday, but during the week they kept playing it. That's the first time. I was just watching TV one night. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Do you remember the episode? No. No, it was like episode five, maybe. One of those. It was early on. But the funny thing was, when I first moved to L.A., I was doing comedy. I was at the comedy store. I signed with this manager named Ken Phillips. And between you and I, he was half retarded. He had uh, he had a company in Georgia, and he sold it. And he took the money and just wanted to move out here and become a comedy manager. And he bought a bunch of suits. He bought a fucking Range Rover. He had the wife with the fake tits. And then he, uh, he fucking sent me on little gigs. And I went to New York one time, and he got me a showcase in Governor's. He got me a showcase in Caroline's, and he called me back, and he goes, Hey, I just got off the phone with this guy, and they want to see you in the city for this show called The Sopranos. He goes, I don't know what it's about. Just make a tape and take it to them. This is the address. And I'm like, I'm not dropping a fucking tape off about singers and shit. So I didn't drop it off. See what happens for being fucking lazy? Owen, we feeling all right? Don't yeah, I'm just going to get some air. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, 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 I'm fucking crazy high though. Okay, you want this me to? Is... You want more, more water? Yeah. Okay, nice. let's do some water. Yeah. Fuck. I told you, you want to eat too. I saved you because I like you, man. Oh, you're one of the Jesus. few guys in comedy I behave around. <laughs> you and Steve Byrne, I like you both. You're gentlemen and shit. That's nice, why I wanted man. to have you on the show. Every time I see Owen Benjamin, I always behave myself as a comic. I don't say a fucking word because he's such a nice guy. 
Really? Thanks. You and Steve Byrne. One time I flipped out in front of Steve Byrne. Not at Steve Byrne. I went off on a guy in front of Steve Byrne. And I'll never forget turning around how Steve Byrne looked at me. I got in my car and almost cried. What did, what did he do? He wasn't upset. I still talked to him about it. He goes, no, you just... I was going through my own shit. That same guy was at the comedy store Saturday night. And he gave me a canister full of weed. And we talked. It was just a misunderstanding. He was a manager at the store. And right. I was going through my fucking bullshit in 2006. What happened? I probably went up there to get coke and nobody was up there. And uh, a couple days earlier, Paulie Shaw, this guy was Paulie's assistant back in the day. And on Friday night, remember when Paulie Shaw had the show on P TBS? Yeah. Paulie's store, whatever it was, on Friday night, the people from TBS were there. And they were sitting in the audience. So Paulie started taking people off the list who they didn't want on the list. I was one of them, and Joe Rogan was one of them. At the time, Joe had just paid for a stereo system for the room or some shit. I don't know the exact story. And Joe was the reason that the room was packed every Friday night. It really was. This is back in the MySpace days, guys. This was way before podcasts. You know, he, he he had already a great internet presence at the time. I had no idea what an internet presence was. So on this night, Joe went down and the room was sold out and somebody had to tell him he wasn't going up. As a matter of fact, I was down there first and they told me, and I just waited around to see what was gonna happen with Joe. I was actually going to throw salt in there and start a fucking riot. But it didn't happen. I stood by the door with my back to them. And I heard them explaining it to him. And then Paulie came down. And he kind of started saying some fucked up shit. What was he saying? Like, fuck you. You know, the reason why they're here is for me. They're not here for you. Stuff that was just wrong. It was right. just totally inaccurate. I'm the type of guy, if you want to talk shit on and you can back it, talk it. If you're right, you're right. I'll give you your props. But if you come in here going, Joey, I sell more tickets than Kevin Hart. I got to look at you and go, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Stop it, Owen. Yeah. Stop. I like you. What are you fucking busting my ball for? You know I ate six stars. Uh, uh, how, how can you handle six stars? Because we're in training, Owen Benjamin. You understand me? I'll give you a bag to go, and then you'll be in training, and you'll be a soldier of the church. This is fucking so intense. People will see you, and now when they see you, they'll bring you something for your baby oh. and the best edible that city has to make. And they're going to say, we heard you on the church. Here you go. You're in training. Nice. I'm training nice. hard. And they'll bring you mushrooms. They'll like bring you acid. Fitbit. Yeah, they'll bring you acid, mushrooms, all the fun stuff <laughs> yeah. that you could take in the hotel room by yourself before right. you and see just your lose my fucking mind. Sure. With an iPod. Yeah. But Throw on some Pink Floyd. Just fucking take And that's off. it. It's over. We don't do that much shit no more like that. We don't go back to the room and put music on and sit there and meditate. But uh, what are we talking about? No. So... They were going off on Joe. I turned my back just so I, I, if I had to take a lie detector test, always turn your back on Benjamin so you could say, I really didn't see nothing. <laughs> I turned around. He was on the floor. I don't know nothing. But right. wouldn't they say, like, didn't, did you hear him hitting somebody? I don't know. I don't know. Lie detector test will go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they can't commit. They just, the, the main thing is, did you see anybody get hit? No, I didn't. Why not? There was a fucking shooting star. <sighs> I gotta teach you everything, Lisa. I had. So I turned my back. I thought it was gonna go down. This guy wasn't a bad guy. I was, my head was in the wrong place. I was a little sick and tired of the comedy store. I didn't like what they had done that night. And to be honest with you, you never like to see your friends get shit on for no reason. So I kind of felt bad, but I always had it out for that guy. And I always had it out for Paulie. And one night I went to the store, maybe a month after that. And he said something to me, and I took it the wrong way and started going off on him. And we grabbed each other, and we yelled at each other, and, you know, I said some dumb shit. And then when I turned around, Steve Byrne was right there. And I never felt so fucking embarrassed in my life. I always apologized to him after that for going off on somebody like him. But the guy was going off on me. I, I left the store shortly after that and didn't go back until about a year ago, and Saturday... As I walk in to check in, he's sitting in the back row. And I came down, I went to the bar and got a water. When I came back, he was in the hallway, he gave me a big hug. 
I asked him how Hawaii was. He says he moved to Northern California. And he said he brought me some goodies and he gave me a little film canister like the 80s filled with this fucking pretty good reefer. He said he, his brother found a seed in a garage sale or something. And it was an, an Afghanistan seed and he's been growing it and shit ever since. So sometimes, you know, it was water under the bridge. Yeah, good ending. What are you going to do? Yeah. You can only try. Talk to me about this piano thing. <laughs> what do you want to know? Yeah, I... Uh, I said I played piano, and you looked like that you wanted to play. Oh, it killed me. When I was a kid, my mother baptized a girl, and I would spend my summers with those that girl's family in Miami. And her mom was a big-time college professor in Cuba. And after she got married and stuff, and she had kids, and she might, you know, she she uh, exiled to the United States. Now that she had kids, she wasn't a teacher or a professor anymore, but she still had that. Uh, state of mind so when I would spend my summers in Miami she would basically tell me by the way from 9 to 12 here every day we do schoolwork like there's no fucking going out and playing there's nothing you got two options you could either do schoolwork or you go nail be a laborer for Rodolfo and you're like wait a second so I get if I be a laborer for Rodolfo I gotta be there all day with him picking up boards and getting bit by dogs and shoveling and shit or I could stay here and do three hours of schoolwork. Even at that age I figured out it would help me. So I would stick around but she had three kids. Me and the two kids would do schoolwork while the girl played the piano. And let me tell you something, her mother would fucking chastise her to no fucking end for perfection because she was doing dun 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 no no that's, that's that fucking other song. She was doing some fucking Tchaikovsky type thing at some college at the age of 12. But I'll never forget how much the mother used to torture that girl, how much they went back and forth. But the discipline that she had to have always stuck in my mind. Yeah, mine wasn't, my upbringing wasn't like that. I you just played I just it. played all, yeah, that's what I was drawn to. It's like we didn't have a TV for part of my childhood, so we just had a piano and my dad sang opera. So that's how we got along. And I just... I just liked it. I always liked playing it. And never uh, professionally, never thought about it. No, I mean, I had my piano teacher uh, was a, a woman named Lucinda, and when I was eleven for Halloween, she went as a dude, uh, and then she got a sex change. So I always thought it was funny because it's like if you're gonna first have a sex change, do it on Halloween because it was like an easier transition. But so then I got taught. It was the same person taught me as a woman, and then as a man, and that's when I got fascinated by like gender because it's like I got to see a whole different brain you know it's like she, on testosterone it was a much different person now what year was this 1991 I remember around that time either 60 minutes or 2020 had a whole thing I had just gotten separated and I was home and I was miserable and 2020 had a thing about a, a woman the whole transition the man yeah the whole so she was a woman first and then became a man. Yeah. What was her new name? Larry. Still friends with him. Great dude. But yeah, it was... Uh, and how is his life now? Is he married? Uh, Does he have a wife? Yeah, he has Does a he wife. Have a boyfriend? Wife. Uh, yeah, just chilling. Just happy. Plays piano. <laughs> I don't know. All that shit, I don't know. It's, it's fascinating. How old were you when when you were when that happened? Eleven. You got I, balls of steel, kid. Around, around the same time, I wasn't a piano teacher, but my friend, my dad's friend, had a friend who like we'd always be at their at this place, and it was a, a guy who was I don't know if he was transitioning to be a woman, but he was dressing like a woman, and it, like it didn't freak me out, but I was just I was thinking I was around that age, and I just didn't understand it. It was like, confusing. Yeah. See, I grew up with dudes who put wigs on. And just put Scott tape around their dick and took their chance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know if they did the complete check. And sometimes you'd see them and they'd have glasses on with a suit. And sometimes you'd see them and they were clean shaven with a wig on. You know, it was always an adventure. Spanish people got wild imaginations. They just don't commit, you know. It's the whole fucking, I, I've never really known anybody who made the transition in front of me. That's very interesting. Because I see all this transgender stuff and I hear about North Carolina and all the bathrooms, and in the back of my mind, I'm going, 
I don't see these many transgenders. Right. All right, you go to Hollywood by Yum Yum Donuts. Mm-hmm. That's the, right there on Beverly. That's that's where it's crack a lacket. That's where you see the whole neighborhood of them. But but and they're not even really not full committed. You could tell that they just no, they're just they're just weekend right, warriors. They're just weekend warriors. <laughs> 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 weekend weekend warriors. Fuck. Did he ever explain himself to you and? Pull you aside and go. Listen, next week is going to be a fucked up week. No, that's why she did it on Halloween. Because then it was like, oh, where? But are you she really? didn't skip a beat. Like th- there was no, there was no hint. Like there was no. Listen, next we, time we never see. even talked about it. I think I was right at that age where I. You didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a fuck. No, you don't give. A I fuck. literally didn't care at all. So I just, it just never came up really. I'm trying to think if I ever. My mom had friends that were gay, like flamingly gay, you know, but nothing to that that I was, you know, I knew a guy that put a wig on. That freaked me out a little bit. You know, it took some time to adjust. I had to ask a few people. (laughs) But besides that, I never really had somebody who, I thought there was a lot of preparation into having a gender operation. I thought that there was a lot of... uh, psychological you have to go through a year psychological evaluation they give you hormones right now where i live the people across the street from me they're dabbling in something uh, i don't know what the fuck it is I, I have no idea he says he's a pilot on, on one of those charter planes listen if you're a man and you come into my plane as the pilot as lucille on monday <laughs> i can't trust you with my fucking plane guy. right i can't you you're confused. You're not confused. I don't know. I just can't. I'm not saying nothing bad. I'm just saying that he's been home a lot more since he became a woman. I'll tell you that much. And, <laughs> and he gained a lot of weight. I don't know if he cut his dick off. I know his hair is down. I know the cheekbones are high. I know that his voice changed a little bit. And I know he stays in a lot more. <laughs> Tremendous. Yeah, those things are strong, Owen. Yeah, you just oh, relax. Man. This is the devil here tonight. This is it. This is as good as it gets, people. It's a fucking Monday night on the church of what's happening now. Where's Tony Bennett? Did you even line it up tonight? No, you didn't. See? You're fucking slipping, Lisa. Yet. Thank God Owen Benjamin's on the show tonight. Let's smoke this fucking bowl while Lisa Yet does his thing. You want to take a hit of this? Owen Benjamin, this will get the blood pressure down. Another hit, Owen, is he saying? Yeah, I can really fucking function. Oh, yeah. No, no. This is the... <laughs> I want to be around. This is it, man. Where's the fucking light? I got a light. It disappeared here. You guys get this hat? Is this, like, weird? Do I no. Thank God we have to do it. You can get on the ceiling right now. Whatever, Tom. No, I gotta go. Uh, yeah, so my wife is back in like that. They're calling you a new soldier in training. That's you're, right. You're, 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 you got like eight stars. You're a new star really? down there. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dog. That's it. Uh, you're the man of steel today. What happened to Tony Bennett? That was quick. I turned him off because you're coming back. No, I'm just. I just went to open the door to give my main man some man here, because I've been where he's been. Thank God you didn't pop the second one. He wanted to eat another one. I go, no, 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 no. Just see how this Holy one tastes. Fuck. You know, I know you live down the beach. I see you out of the night smoking. <laughs> I figured you could handle it. Relax for a little while. You ain't driving. You can't drive. Right. The car, you got to go all the way to the 90. Forget about it. I got a probiotic in here. I got some green juice. <laughs> how long do those usually last for? Only a couple hours. <laughs> no, oh yeah, you're all right. Is it for a while? Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> oh yeah, we don't fuck around here, old man. This is why this is the church of what's happening now today. I thought you fucking knew. That's why I asked you when you called. I go, do you smoke some reef? I remember one night I saw you out there puffing and shit. Yeah, no, I like uh, I like vape pens and shit. <laughs> 
But what? it's the it's the edibles. That I, I haven't done an edible in a fucking while. Oh, then yeah, this is a, this is like fucking watching a Hitchcock movie. You know what I'm saying this is like you're in the birds right now. You see, uh, Jungle Book 3D. I think I am right now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> then relax. Just sit tight. We, we got your back. Just drink some water. I left the air open uh, for you so you don't get anxiety. Have you seen Captain America yet, Joey? Oh, yeah, yeah. You should have seen me going up and down and fucking going with my little shirt on. Get the fuck out of here. I got better shit to do than going to see fucking Captain America. Look at the reefer we're smoking tonight. We're all, we are Captain America. <laughs> this is it. Don't get no better than this. What are you going to do? It's a Monday night here. It's a Monday fucking night. Can you imagine running with Uncle Joey on a Friday? You have a heart attack. <laughs> oh my God. Where are you going this week? This week I'm going to beautiful fucking Sacramento, California. That should be fun. Very excited. I like that little room. It's a small room. They got the sushi joint. I got red lobster. And I got the habit. I got the menu planned for three days. You understand me? They give you that little half a Hindu breakfast at the hotel. The eggs smell like fucking God knows what. But you <laughs> close your eyes, you inhale them, and you pray for the best. At lunchtime, somebody picks you up. You go for a little walk around the neighborhood. And at night, you got red lobster with a bunch of black people who I love. Nobody's more passionate about fucking red lobster than black people in Sacramento. They go bananas in there. <laughs> that one specifically? They love oh, yeah. It. Oh, yeah. I, I used to, right when Paula and I first got together, she lived in Inglewood. And when I would drop her off on Sundays, we'd go to eat sometimes. And they had a... Applebee's and a Red Lobster and black people they would come out in their church clothes I, I used to go on I used to like I used to sometimes tell the mom to not cook be so we could go and and watch but like it was the best thing I've ever seen Applebee I didn't we never went to Red Lobster but Applebee's was hysterical they had a, a Red Lobster on Wilshire Boulevard no they didn't really yes they did years ago years ago me and my wife came back my wife picked me up at the airport this is when me and my wife lived in the one bedroom with the fucking 19 cats. I made like a bonus somewhere, and I remember going, let me take you out to lunch. And I took it to that Red Lobster, and it was filled with black people. I loved it. I mean, I didn't get pissed off. No, it's better. and giggling. Yeah. They were dancing. They had the whole fucking thing. <laughs> oh, and Benjamin coming back. <laughs> He's coming back. He's making a comeback like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> this is good shit. These stars are the stars of death, oh, and Benjamin. <laughs> Trust me, I'm fucked up right now myself. How many did you take? Did you... I took what six? Five? Six. Are you, you want... serious? Sure. How the fuck do you guys do that? This is don't, but, this is it. We I, we've been in training right now for about for almost four, four years, years. Five years. Oh my god. Lee started at thirty edibles and, and and smoking hash out of a can. Look where he is today. He's a successful podcast tour, and he's eating fucking seven hundred milligrams a week. Who's better than <laughs> a you? A week, a night. Whatever the fuck. But you're having a good time. You're in training. Oh, yeah. You're breathing. You're throwing up kettlebells. Yeah, that's. I'm really bummed out that I'm, like, this is the first time in a sport that I have actually kind of like it. And I'm, we've been doing snatches, and I suck at them. So, like, today I was watching videos. It's weird. I get competitive with myself with that stuff. And I don't like that I'm not good at it. Well, here's the good thing about where you're going. The good thing about where you're going, that he's, he's got a great philosophy in Oh, training. he's amazing. He's an amazing guy. He's an ex-New York firefighter, and he's committed his life to this. If you see this guy, I'm his age, or he's four years older, tell him what he was doing the other day. Hanging from, like, he does pull-up hangs for, like, three minutes. He just hangs. You know, this guy's in amazing shape. Oh, yeah. I'm... Uh, sweetheart of a guy. Dave is a sweetheart of a guy, but he's got a different philosophy to training, especially the guys like myself and Lee. We're not looking to go to the Olympics. He's like, look, whatever you can't do, you can't do today. But in a week or two, you'll be able to do it. He gets mad if you say can't. He yeah, like, he, he gets make pissed other, He'll make other people do push-ups. So it's just really weird. That's the philosophy he has. Also, Lee and I trained before. You want to take a walk? You're right. Yeah, I'm going to take a walk. Get some air right there. Get some air in the back of me. And take your water with you just in case you fucking, uh, you know, you want to dehydrate a little bit. You'll be all right. This happens. It's the best. It's 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 better than the people who like don't take it. You're, yeah, people love you. You're you're a hero. So the, the 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 problem is here that his philosophy was a. It's not going to work today. Let's modify the movement so you could get it. 
right? That's what he would say. He <laughs> right, modifies yeah. the movement. Right, yeah, absolutely. So at least you could work on that muscle. And B, he had a different philosophy when it came to kettlebells. He has a, he had a philosophy of he never wanted to overtrain you. You know, cl- class today was like 35 minutes. I, I stayed after the practice. He never really wanted to overtrain you. He always wanted you leaving going, really, that's it? Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Stretch your back and get the fuck out of here. And it makes a, it's gone with me now, today. Like, today I was supposed to do kettlebells, but I got busy. I took a nap. I had to go get my hair fucking done for this thing on Wednesday. I had to do a thousand things. Little stupid. Is he leaving? <laughs> he abandoned shit. <laughs> This is the real deal at church, you know? I don't think he knows the code. I think, I think we're okay. <laughs> nah, he's okay. This is heavy duty. That Those, yeah. those fucking stars, we, as a matter of fact, give me the bag. I'm going to eat another one out of respect for this poor kid. Okay. What do you think? I'm not eating it alone. No. Nah, You're my partner in crime. I, I figured <laughs> I was involved in this. <laughs> out of respect for you people, you know I love you with all my heart. I hope you have a good week. I'm eating this star on a fucking solo tip just to let you know. We ain't fucking around no more. 2016 is the year of the church bitches, all right? Take it or fucking leave it. I ain't got time for this shit no more. Your attitude should be like my attitude. It's over. We're taking over this bitch. Right or wrong, cocksucker? What are you drinking water for? What Absolutely. You, huh? You going on a plane or something? What's with the water? I was, drink- I was, uh, I was drinking. Okay. <laughs> Um, no, but he, and he, he, he was just saying like, you have to, you just have to start somewhere and it's, but it's like, this is the first time in this that I've struggled. Like I've struggled with certain aspects of it, but this is the first move that I really just, I'm just sucking at. I can't believe the dynamic that working out has added to my stand up mm-hmm. in the last seven years. Like if you look at my career, my career really started rocking and rolling as a personal for me when I started working out. It gives you an extra form of confidence. You feel like you're standing higher. After 90 days, if you stick with a routine or something, you do feel fucking different. They, they don't tell you that just for their health. I don't, I'm don't. i not telling you this because... I'm telling you this because I'm living it right now. Right. You know, a year ago, I couldn't go to two jujitsus in a week. Just couldn't do it. Now you're going to two in a day. Now I'm going to two classes in a day. Sometimes, you know, t- tomorrow I'm going to go to one, and Wednesday I'm going to go to two. You know, it's always something. I always, I'm doing something. But it's amazing, you know, what little strides become. You know, little th- commitments become big fucking commitments. I've always fucking said that. But I can't believe the dynamic working out has added to my life in general. It gets me perked up. It makes me stick to all my other goals. Like, if I could go somewhere and wrestle for an hour, I could, for four hours, I could do so many fucking things. I write so much in the afternoons now, it's fucking pathetic. Is it because you overcome a, f- a fear? Like, that's what we were talking about today. It's like, the, my he thinks my main problem with it is I'm just scared of, of it getting close to my head, so I'm, I'm trying to catch it. So, and I know you've talked about jujitsu is to get over your fear of, like, the breathing. So is that, like, overcoming a fear just, like, motivates you? Yeah, but I also realized something today. I'm going to have surgery in July for my nose. Tomorrow I'm going to go for the seat scan at 10, 9.30 in the morning. Okay. And it's so weird how today was the first time that I really realized what somebody said to me a couple of weeks ago, that I do struggle when I breathe from my nose. I can feel it now. When I walk, because ever since Dr. Belisa came in here and I read the book, I've been working more on my breathing exercises. And I can feel it now sometimes when I'm breathing in that, you know. It's not as strong. It's not as strong. But I'm struggling. So now I'm looking forward to having this fucking surgery. And what's it, it's going to fix your nose and you should be able to breathe normally? Yeah. And a lot of people have told me. They said, listen, man, my friend had that. And now his life has changed completely. Like Dr. Belisa said, oxygen is oxygen. If you're not getting it, if you're struggling to get it, that's why your blood pressure is high. There's so many fucking variables from it. Could this fix your sleep apnea, maybe? Have I don't think it's going to fix the sleep apnea. I really don't. You know, even through all this working out over the last seven, eight years that I've been doing, the sleep apnea has come and gone as far as what I'm able to do. 
When you're at your lightest, do you still have it? Like when you were at like 260. 270, yes, I still had it. I was falling. That's interesting, okay. I was falling asleep on planes. The other day I fell asleep on my couch. Fuck, I forgot to call this guy today. I fell asleep yesterday, and this poor kid called me two days in a row. The one day I got caught up doing something on yesterday. I could fall asleep on my chair now. And you couldn't do that before? No. What would happen? I would choke. Right away? Yeah. Oh, no. I could sleep for 40 minutes now and wake up scared that I'm not sleeping with the machine, and it really shocks myself. But the other night, I was telling you, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I had to sleep out in the machine on and I ate those edibles. Right. Okay, and we ate the star late, like tonight. Like, I just fucked up. Because that last star is not going <laughs> to hit me until 2.30 in the morning. Right, yeah. I'm going to wake up huffing and fucking puffing all goddamn night. So, when I got up that night to, from being uncomfortable, I peed. And when I went back to bed, I could feel my heart beating from the edible. And I could feel that was still a little bit high. And all of a sudden my mind played with the emotions from the edible. In what way? Because all of a sudden, my mind started coming up with fucked up thoughts. Uh, like my mind said to me, what happens if the sleep apnea <laughs> machine breaks right now? And all of a sudden, I started getting anxiety just thinking about that. What and would do you know to- you're high and then it's ridiculous or do you get swept up in it? Because I'll get swept up in it sometimes. If I get, I'll get so swept up and I gotta take the mask off and stand up and go outside and get air and walk around. And then what pisses me off about that, what frustrates me is that now I'm awake. And now I'm thinking about tomorrow, how I'm going to be ineffective in so many fucking different areas because i got to stay up for two fucking hours. This is what comes to my mind. And it's a never-ending circle of terrible thoughts. It's a never-ending circle of what comes into your mind. And once I'm laying horizontally and I get fear, I can feel my blood pressure and my tension and my heart beating. So if I'm laying on my left side, I could feel my heart fucking pumping. I got to flip over. And by that point, now my mind is taking over. Now my mind is telling me this could be the beginning of a heart attack. So I get up and I pick up the fucking phone like the asshole that I am. I get my robe and I stand in the living room (laughs) and wait for the fucking world to end. And then nothing happens. I get pissed off. I go in. I drink an aspirin. I fucking drink some water. You do not have an aspirin? Yes, I do. And then I sit down, right, like a fucking Momo, and I sit there in the living room by myself, and eventually one of the fucking cats will come over, because that's their peak hour, so they want to get petted. And I get frustrated at first, and they jump on my lap, but then I go, you know what, wait a second, he may be on to something, because my, be- <laughs> my, my, by me petting this little fucking cat, my anxiety might go away, and sure enough, it goes away. So then now I'm wide awake. I'm playing with super bad. It's usually super bad or Demi that torment my life. So now I turn the TV on. I'm watching. Sometimes I got vinyl on DVR. Or I've been watching the People versus O.J. Simpson again. I was watching that. And then guess what it'll do, Lee? Guess what, guess what the genius that Uncle Joey does? Oh, no. You don't take another edible, do you? No, I wouldn't. I, I'm not even that smart. I get up and go outside, and I smoke two bowls of weed. So guess what happens? Now it's 3.15 in the morning. I'm sitting there, and my world is ending. It's collapsing. I can't fucking breathe, and I got to drink fucking a gallon of water to calm down in the living room. And then Why my, two bowls? Who knows, Lee? Who knows? Because I'm a fucking idiot. And then I fucking... <laughs> And then I fucking uh, I take At three in the morning. I take Owen Benjamin abandoned ship. I, I <laughs> Some of the stuff is here. No. No, that's my sweatshirt. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for coming, Owen. No, I don't know. Maybe he's outside. Should I go check? No, no, no. Stay mind your business. So that's what I fucking do. So now I gotta sit there for another hour while my heart's beating. And I got to take one of those fucking anxiety pills the doctor gave me, one of those Larry pills. And then I fucking calm down, and I go back, and I sleep like a baby till like 7.30, and my wife wakes me up, and I'm running late. I'm telling you, it's going to happen tonight, because I got to be somewhere at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Whenever I, like- I got to be somewhere in the mornings, I have a horrible fucking night. Yeah, I can't sleep. When I, got, when I don't got to be somewhere the next morning, I'm like Johnny fucking tired. Once <laughs> I know I got to fucking be somewhere, all of a sudden I'm insomnia Joe. I can't fucking sleep. I can't. So many characters. Oh, please. I, I, there's a thousand fucking characters in my world. I got Insomnia Joe. I got fucking... Johnny Sleepy. Johnny Sleepy, you know. 
I got like 10 fucking characters in my fucking personality <laughs> trait. I would fail on Match.com with those fucking morons. What's your personality? 18 of them. You need like 10 different LinkedIn yeah. different accounts. Johnny Reefa. You know. <laughs> fucking Joey Bad in Bed. Joey One Minute. <laughs> Joey One Minute. I what like up? it. What's up with you, buddy? Just trying to put the pieces together. Like I said, I've been trying to write a lot more. Trying to just get my fitness going a lot more, you know. Just trying to uh, stick with what I'm doing over there. How's right? jujitsu been going? Listen, I have bad days and I have good days, but the most important thing is that I'm consistent, and that was the ultimate goal in doing this. The same reason why you joined the kettlebell gym. First of all, I know you. You give somebody a yard, you're gonna be there eight oh one. Yeah. Hot salute. Fuck yeah. I know you. So. Uh, This whole thing taught me a lot, this comedy thing. It taught me a lot. It taught me how easy life is, even though it was very hard. Because it taught me that sticking with something. And how hard that overcoming... If if, if, I, if right now I look at the first eight years of my comedy, right? I got to tell you how hard it really was. Like if, if you said to me, Joey, this is what you're going to do in the next eight years... I'd tell you I'm not going to fucking do it. But I'd do it all over again. And because I did this, it helps me understand how easy the system works, how easy life works. And this applies whether, let's say, you want to be a baker or a mechanic or whatever. You know, listen, man. Uh, yeah, I could walk into uh, whatever motorcycle technology or automobile. When you're 14, if that's what you like doing, you're 15. Look at this kid, Cassius Morris. I wish I had the fucking brain that that kid had at a young age. Right. Because people, this is easy. It seems like it's a long time. When you come to me at lunchtime and go, Joey, can I ask you a question? What are you making out? And I say, I'll make 15 an hour. And you go, fuck, I'm making six. How long till I get to make 15 an hour? And you're like, uh, I've been working here for seven years. You're like, fuck. Fuck! Seven years for nine bucks. You know, but then you, a smart motherfucker will say, well, I could work here, learn a trade at the same time. And who knows what will happen in seven years. I could open up my own thing. But the main thing is I don't think about the money right now. See, that's what I used to get caught up in when I was young. I used to get caught up in how much are they paying me now because I never thought there was going to be a tomorrow. I always thought they were kidding me, but there really is a fucking tomorrow. But how do you, especially when you're young, you need the money now. So how do you focus, how can you focus on tomorrow when rent's due tomorrow? Putting the fucking blinders on. By putting blinders on and going, you know what, I'm going to stick with this. Because something good's going to happen. And then now, guess what happens, Lee? That job you were doing five days a week, one of the guys from that shop recommended you so you could do weekend work somewhere else and you could make 10 bucks an hour now at that place. And you look at me and you go, Joey, but I'm working seven days a week. Listen, anything that you want to be good at, you got to do seven days a week. I wish I'd go to jiu-jitsu seven days a week. My body just can't handle it. I went to jiu-jitsu Sunday. It was basically an easy fucking class. I rolled one time, then we had to get out of there for Mother's Day. I fucking had a hard time walking around. I took a leaves and shit today. So if you were 25, you'd go seven days a week? Yeah. Wow. Not even to compete, just as an exercise. Just to take my mind off my everyday grind. If I had to pick something right now at this age, if somebody came to me at 25 and said, listen, I, I want to take my mind off the every, any everyday grind, what should I do? I'd say go to that particular jiu-jitsu school and tell, do everything he tells you to do. Watch the strongest guy in there and do what he does. It's just like life. If you're an engineer and you want to be a good engineer, you're going to hang out with the dude that calls in sick, the dude that does blow. No, you're going to hang out with that Chinese dude over there that comes in an hour before and stays till 10 o'clock at night. That's why he does what he does. Because eventually all that time will pay in. You're clocking in. You're not clocking in at your job. You're clocking in on the clock of life. And the clock of life always fucking remembers. It really does. 
If you think I would tell you this when I was 30, you're fucking crazy. Okay, let me, okay. But let me tell you who told me this. Slash. I'm not friends with Slash. I don't know Slash. I don't know his phone number. I don't know how to get a hold of him. I bumped into him once at the Riviera. I was I had insomnia. It was insomnia, Joe. <laughs> I had no drugs. I had Working. maybe at that time Rogan didn't smoke weed, so I had I didn't have no weed. So I'm walking through this fucking hotel and there was like a pinball tournament or something, like a convention, and he was there. Slash was I, just roaming the pinball. He tournament? was he was at with the convention, but that night he was at the bar. And he was just standing there, and I asked him, I told him I was a fan that I had seen him at the comedy club on Sunset one night. When we used to do comedy at that place where I met I met used to hang. I told you he used to run. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I saw him there one night, and I said <laughs> hello, and he was very nice. And I asked him why Guns N' Roses broke up, and he said, you know, he said that what, what you're going through right now. This is how long you've been doing comedy. He goes, are you making money? I told him the truth. I said, I'm in Vegas. I'm going to make $200 for the weekend. I'm doing two shows. And I got $200 on the plane ticket. And I got a fucking pass to eat in the employee hotel. Not even in the p- buffet. Listen to me. Not even in the buffet. And you were t- what t- explain what the employee food is. That's where all the food that don't get eaten in the buffet goes to. Oh. Like pieces of chicken with a bite taken out of it that people, that they put back. I'm joking. It's a joke, people. But the point of this was that he told me that what you're doing right now has a payoff. And some pe- that's why you have to do this hard work. So when the payoff comes, you don't analyze it. That's what gets people in trouble. You ever see a character you like in a movie? Right. And you uh, don't see him ever again. And one day you ask around or you Google his name and it says that, you know, he just got hooked on drugs or something and disappeared. Somewhere there was something. Something couldn't be handled. I know this because I went through it. Something somewhere couldn't be handled. You know, Lee, a lot of people can't handle success. How not it, at any level. Not at any level. What happens to them? Justin Bieber. Michael Jackson. Oh, God rest his soul. Prince. Prince was good. Prince was good. I shouldn't say his name like that. But your world changes, your perception. So you think that's what that is? Is people who are going like the Lindsay Lohans and, and whoever you want to say, they just can't handle their success? They're going at, crazy. First, at first, it's this perception, man. It's this perception. And in the back of your mind, I can't imagine. You think that you're doing something nobody else has ever done. And in the meantime, they're blowing smoke up your ass. I think about the time Ronda Rousey got kicked in the head. And she just sat on that mat. And people kept saying she's dizzy. She wasn't dizzy. She was thinking. She was thinking about all the shit she bought into. And all the lies and all the fucking bullshit people told her and the smoke they blew up her ass. How in all her training, she didn't get prepared for this. Or maybe that all the media things she had to do. And all the time that was invested in talking to people and meeting with people and talking about movies. Your mind got taken away from the fucking main focus. It's like getting arrested. When they put the handcuffs on you, what's the old adage that a cop knows if you're guilty or innocent because the guilty guy, he goes to bed like a baby. That's it. He got caught. The innocent guy is up thinking, how is he going to get out of this fucking mess? That's really crazy. Yeah, that that would be my first instinct, too. Like, how would I fix this? When I got sentenced, I snorted a little under a gram of blow, and I fell asleep. For about an hour in the jail cell while they came and got me to process me. Maybe an hour and a half I fell asleep. And I mean asleep with drool coming out of my fucking mouth. And I, that's when I realized. I go, holy shit. You know, that's it. This is it. This is my fate. So you didn't have anxiety about being in prison? You were just like, I, I deserve it. They caught me. That's it. That was it. At that point, everything else was bullshit. Once that judge said six years didn't mean shit. 
Once I walked in there and I took my fucking handcuffs off and I sat in that cell, that's where the walls fell in on me. And it was the weirdest thing because the walls fell in on me and the walls fell in on me. I went through this panic, a little bit of attack, like your life flashing in front of your eyes. And I took my jacket off. I had a suit, you know, and I had a college shirt with no T-shirt underneath. But I got that heat, that anxiety heat you get. I took that jacket off. And I, I don't know if I breathed through it. I know I didn't pass out. And I was alone. And there was a camera on me. And as I'm petting the jacket on my leg, Lee, I could feel something in the jacket. I thought it was a button. And I went to flip the jacket over and I stuck my hand on the left side. And there it was. I could feel a fucking baggie. And I said, I hope this is fucking empty. And I put my hand up so the camera wouldn't see it. I left it in his hand. And it had like a little rock and the rest of it was powder. I remembered what batch that was and everything at that moment. Like when I got it, like in July. I got sentenced in August. And it had been in that suit since July. Since that was a special gone, batch? No, I had gone to court before in that suit. You did not bring coke to court with Dog, you. Dog, I was out of my fucking bird. And I crushed <laughs> it up. I crushed it up. I took my wallet out. I took a dollar bill out I had in my wallet, like a 20 or a 10. God knows what I had in there. I didn't have no hundreds or nothing. And I rolled up like a five, whatever the fuck it was, and I did that whole package on one snort. You didn't, they wouldn't see you. They didn't see me. I may believe I was pissing. And I went into the sink like I was washing my hands, so the camera was over my back. I put the dollar bill in hand. I put it already in the package, so I put it up to my nose, and I snorted it, opened the dollar bill, wet it, and I flushed the dollar bill with the fucking package just in case, dog. You know I don't fuck around. You flushed the dollar bill. That's Everything. Dollar. What was I going to do with it? I'm in prison. What do I need a dollar bill for? What was I going to do? What's a dollar going to fucking do for me? So I flushed it, and I sat on the thing, and Lee, within 20 minutes, I passed down. And you were just relaxed. Like, like what, hap what, what, what went through your head when you woke up and realized that you had fallen asleep in prison? Once I heard my name... There was nothing I could do or think. That that's it. I was I was a beaten man. Everything had surrendered. Like all the thoughts I had had for the last sixteen months or whether or not or what was I gonna do with my life, this was it. Now I had to start thinking about what the fuck was I gonna do now. I'm not gonna lie to you, like four days later I started calling my then girlfriend and, and my attorney and seeing if we could put something together to get me out of there. But within a week, I knew I was doomed. There was no gonna. I wasn't gonna escape. I'm not that fucking dumb. I was gonna escape or nothing like that. Did you? Did you at that point know that it was probably gonna be like a year and a half or however long you ended up doing? Or did you think it was gonna be the full six years? I thought about two years. I thought it was gonna be about two years. So you didn't even really know. But I also knew something else that he had said something to my attorney. He told my attorney to file a reconsideration letter. Right off the bat, he told my attorney that. The judge. The motion. The motion couldn't get served for 120 days, which means four months. So I knew I was doing four months at least. And I knew that even if I went to court after four months, this bullshit. So I got sentenced in August. All right? Right. So that's... What's four months? That's December. What happens in December? The holidays. Yes. It's a slow death. F yeah, and then... The hearing was scheduled for January 20th. The day the president either got, he got an uh, what is, what's that called inaugurated? Right. So it was 1989, January 20th, because I remember sitting in the cell waiting to go to court, and going, and the community corrections people said, "Nope, we're not taking him." Oh, you're so you're trying to get out of prison somehow. I was trying to get the sentence reduced to six years community service. Six years, six years community correction. What does that mean? Which means that they put you in a halfway house or a work release program. You have to stay clean, have a job, go to school, and after then you have to petition the court again, and then they let you go home. But you still have those six years hanging over your head. And if you do something fucked up, 
they put you back in jail for the remainder of that time. That's scary to think about. So what happened was, community corrections turned me down. <laughs> Just immediately. And the probation department turned me down. But guess what else happened? What happened? I had done five months. So five months. So what happens is, when you go to prison, you go to prison under a number basis. Okay, so you're allowed to file for the halfway house. At the 18th month, you're eligible for a halfway house at 18 months. For your for six years? No. Is everyone eligible? Okay, so six years. Okay, so let, let, me, let me do it for you. So six okay. years, all right? Right. Tomorrow you go to fucking jail, you get six years. Six times 12 is what? 72. 72 right. What's half is 72? 36. You're going to do 36 months. Right. If it's nonviolent. Okay. If it's a violent crime, you're going to do three quarters of your sentence. If it's nonviolent, first offender, you behave yourself, you get your high school diploma, you join the band, you join the choir, you do all your therapy, and you pay your restitution. That's the most important thing, that you pay your restitution. So you got 36 months, okay? So let's say my situation. So that's three okay. years. In my situation, it was zero to six. They gave me four. So that's 48 months. Okay. 48 months divided in two is what? 24. I did a month in county. A, a month in county counts for two. What's that make it? 22. 22 months. I did five months. Where's that put me at? 17. Oh, so anything. Uh, okay. You Any follow me? Gotcha. So okay. in j fucking December, one day I get, I'm talking to my counselor. He goes, oh, by the way, I put you in for a halfway house already. I go, what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, yeah, you're eligible. They have a computerized calendar. You, they submit you right away. Now they got to decide where they're going to take you. They have to take you. There's no turning you down. They have to really? take you. It, it just as soon as the bed opens up or something? As soon as the bed opens up. So once I went back, they transferred the sentence to four years. Or they did something. They transferred the sentence to community corrections. And he sentenced, uh, he knocked off something. They knocked off something, so but or, it was already too late. I was already up for a halfway house in December. They had already put me up for a halfway house in December. So now they were just waiting for a fucking bed. So within a week, I got a call that, hey, BCT took you. Boulder County Treatment Center took me. <clears throat> and did you have to pay for the halfway house? Fuck or? yeah. But the beauty of it was... Oh, yeah, the rent. Yeah. The beauty of it was it was either BCTC or LCTC. And LCTC really wanted me. LCTC is Longmont Community Treatment Center. And fuck Longmont. Oh. At that time, Longmont was a cow town. But, Lee, they're the best tacos I ever ate in my fucking life. At the prison? No. At the fucking... At, there was a store in Longmont oh, okay. called... Called the... Uh, something. Lee, I used to drive from Boulder anywhere every day. <laughs> they were 89 cents a piece. I would get 22 of them. I would just give it whatever I had in my pocket. Give me tacos. They were that good? And a soda, What yeah. kind were they? Machaca with eggs with just delicioso tacos in Longmont, Colorado. When I was waiting to get sentenced, I would work at Hertz rent a car and they would say, go to the Longmont and pick up a car. That was music to my ears. Because you it, got to stop at Delicioso Tacos? Did I get to what? Because you got to stop there. Every day. I got jobs in Longmont after that. Valley Subaru, Sprinkler Auto Sales, just to fucking work, just to be able to go to Delicioso. That's how I was fucking banging on in those days. Is it still open? I think so. Would I take you there? I don't know. I don't know if it's the same owners. Hell yeah. I don't know if it's the same breakfast tacos. I don't know what the fuck goes on there. So that's what saved me. So when I got back, I was out of that fucking thing. By February, I was already in the halfway house. And you went in in July? <coughs> oh, yeah. Boom, I was already in the halfway house. That's... I don't know. I don't know how... Because for some, like, obviously I know you and you're a good person, but it is kind of scary that some of these people who are, you think are going away for a while aren't going away for as long as you think they are. No, and that's what I tell people. This is all bullshit. I love when they arrest people and they make those statements on television about somebody. Excuse me. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. I love when you're watching the news and somebody says, oh my God, major drug bust arrest tonight. <laughs> And the south side of, of you know, West Hollywood, Lee Syatt got arrested with three kilos and uh, $42,000 in cash. And they say he had an estimated value of street cocaine at three point million. And you sit there and go, let's figure this out. <laughs> in my day, I would snort coke and do math for hours to figure them out. But then I talked to a detective and they told me how they did it. Do you have those notebooks? No, I left those on fire. I would sit there for hours and do math. (laughs) I could have, I have one witness that's still alive that could call in here and tell you that for 10 hours I would sit there, snort blow, and become fucking Copernicus. What sort of math would you do? Okay. Okay, so for the cases, maybe. I was still doing math in 2000. When I got the longest yard, I was doing math. Like, I would figure out the scenes I was doing and how much each scene they were paying me. Like, I was that retarded at night on the blow. I would get that fucking retarded on the blow. I really think Owen Benjamin abandoned ship. <laughs> he is the first guest that has ever abandoned ship. He just called ship. an Uber, you think? I, I don't know. I think he's out there. I could see it. There was one point where I could see his eyes just go, mm. Thank God he said no on the second one. Yeah, he would have been dead. Well, actually, I, I kind of think the body kind of, like pushes back at that point but maybe not maybe he would be no it happened this listen man i thought i asked him if he smoked dope he said yes no, no he went for it he asked and then he it. said can i take a star it's there you know if you want a star take them but then he saw me and lee eating them and he goes if you guys are gonna eat six of them i might as well take another one guys you know me at home i will give you as many stars as you want as long as you eat them in front of me i want to see a disaster <laughs> happen in front of me i live for that shit i live for that shit He's six foot fucking seven, 200 pounds. I didn't think the star of death was going to kill him. Now, by the way, this kid's a great kid. What I was telling you guys about this guy at home, I'm not bullshitting you. There's like a couple people that when I see out, I behave myself. And he's one of them because he's such a fucking sweetheart. Everyone likes him from what I've heard. Right? Everybody. Yeah. Nobody has a bad word to say about this home Benjamin kid. I, listen, I was leaving the store three weeks ago. I was about to get in my car, and when I'm going to the car, I don't hear nothing. Hey, hello. There's no retreating. There's no retreating. It's over. I I saw him, and I got to tell you something. He brightened my day. There's few people that brighten my day like this. This kid doesn't never says a bad word. He's a funny guy. He works fucking hard. He's out every fucking night. You know, he's done some big fucking movies. So if you get a chance to go see Owen, go down there, bring him an edible, tell him the church sent you. That's it. He'll fucking love it. And we'll get him back in. We'll get him to talk some shit. Let me give some shout-outs here, Lisa. Yeah. First off, to my main people, Greg and Lynn Powers, my main man in SF, John Cutler. I couldn't see him this last weekend. My main man in Bakersfield, Matt Baker. Over there, Bakersfield, BJJ, teaching motherfuckers the true jitsu to the next level. Tammy Burbank. Burbank. Thomas Easter. I'll see Thomas tomorrow night at the Laugh Factory. Hope they don't stab somebody and they don't get banned from there. Melissa Eva Perez. My family in Chicago. Bob Lalingus and shit. I'm shooting my special there October 22nd. Chicago. Why? Because you're bad motherfuckers. And there's no better club than Rosemont fucking Chicago. So I'm shooting my special at Rosemont. It's fucking official. Tickets are not on sale yet. Uh, I got to figure out how to get to the the, the, the Lingus family of fucking uh, uh, Lee. Who who shot fucking Lincoln? Booth Towers. Right. John Wilkes Booth. I got to give him like a little Wilkes Booth there. My man, Mark Walsh, Shad Risa. Crystal Johnson over there looking good in fucking Utah. And my main man, Troy Wallace Evans and shit. Always giving you some love. I'm going to be in Sacramento this weekend. And next weekend, I'm fucking thrilled to say I'm going to one of my favorite cities. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, motherfucking Vania. I'm going to go to fucking Primantes, whatever the oh, fuck it is. To to I'm going to fucking walk around. I'm going to go rub the Roberto Clemente statue. The whole thing, you understand me? I don't give a fuck, Lisa. I'm having a good time. I'm writing. Everything's coming to pieces. 
Uh, I'm writing three things at once. You know, my comedy's kind of weird right now because I'm in the middle of a fucking... I'm like a butterfly. What's a butterfly before he becomes a butterfly? A caterpillar. A caterpillar. No, that process. Oh, uh, cocoon? I'm in a cocoon process right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to put shit together. I don't even know why I chew that nicotine gum. I got to do it with coffee. If not, it doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like cocaine without alcohol. It just don't work. You got to do the fucking yay. You got to drink. You got to look out the window. <laughs> you call your mother for Mother's Day, cocksucker? What'd you send her? I sent her flowers in the car. Flowers in the car. What the fuck? What is wrong with you? When are you going to go see you? You going to go back? Yeah, I'm going to go back June And you're going to come with me in November? Absolutely. Don't be bullshitting me. Fuck yeah. Because now that you went back in June, I'll take one of my freaks and shit. Well, <laughs> yeah, well there's a freak. Uh, I understand. But... No, I'm excited. She's happy. Uh, got her some nice flowers. That was, it was good Mother's Day. It's nice. nice. I tried to do something nice for my wife. I was sad the last two fucking days. You know, I had a, I'm had writing this uh, chapter in the book right now. And... I'm supposed to have three chapters, and then we could sell the book, and then we have to write the book in a certain amount of time. It's not at this point that I'm a bad writer. I know the stories. It's really coming together for the first time. That's awesome. For me. And some days it's, uh, I put eight sentences in, but I take two out, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's always something like that. But the other day, on Mother's Day, I wanted to read the... I didn't read the whole chapter. I just read the uh, part where I go out and I come home and I'm on acid and I go to bed and I get up in the middle of the night and I hear her and I get up to pee and I go down and I find my mother dead and her arm is purple and, you know, I kind of sit there and, and I wrote that out again. And in my mind, I felt like I was supposed to be upset. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was supposed to be upset. You ever feel like that? Like, you might be upset? But I really wasn't upset. I was really proud that I got to write it how I finally wanted to fucking write it. So you didn't get emotional when you wrote Not it? Not at all. You know, I'm trying to write the aftermath now, which really uh, takes away from that chapter. That chapter is such a strong little piece of writing that after that, you just close the book and put it down for an hour and go, I don't even want to know what happens next. At what point do you think you got, like, were able to not get emotional? Would it be, like, last year? Is it just this? Like, how many years ago did it, did it take? Because that's what the, about Mother's Day. I'm away from my mom. I start to think about when she's not going to be here and I get sad. Listen, so. I got bad news for you. In life, when you lose a friend, a relative, a loved one, the pain's always there. It's always there. It always stays with you. Especially my mother. The pain's... The pain's always there. It's like being poor and having a toothache. You learn to live with it. You learn to live with it. You ever see somebody who's drinking and they have like a fucked up missing tooth? That tooth was fucked up for two years. But he had to decide between booze or a dentist. <laughs> And he picked a fucking, he picked booze. I did the same thing with blow. You know, I had to pick between a $50 piece of Coke or paying a dentist. What the, what would you do? I, I picked fucking the $50 piece of blow and I took an aspirin and shoved it in the fucking cavity for the, you know, that's how fucked up my teeth were in the back. I would just get an aspirin and put it in my tooth. There was a hole in your tooth? Yeah, bare aspirin, put it in my tooth. <gasps> And then once it really started hurting, I get a bottle of Jack, one of those little pints, and I drink it, half of it straight, and then I just take the fucking tooth or whiskey. I'm lying to you. I wouldn't drink Jack. I take like Chivas, one of those whiskeys that has like a sour taste to it, and I would just pull the fucking tooth out. This whole side is fake in the back. Jesus. And I had the abscess. One time I got really sick in Boulder, and I went over to to the fucking place and the, the hospital and they yanked the rest of it out but what do you think those people feel like it's the same thing when you lose a relative or a mom or something more and more I'm getting more I get calls at least every six months from somebody who says hey man 
Can I talk to you about something? I had a kid hunt me out. The kid who I stayed with from fucking 30 years ago hunted me out to tell me his father died. And that one night he was thinking now that he understood me and how could I live with that at an early age that he really got a whole new respect for me for even living with that pain. I have a teacher that is, Mr. Barone, his mother died. I heard he's in a horrible place right now. Grown fucking man. Grown fucking man. Grown fucking man. You're never prepared for none of this shit. That's the part of life you're never prepared for. Listen, I like Prince. I like the music. Was I a big fuck? No. No. I, I, you know, somewhere along the line, I stopped listening to a lot of music, and I listened to whatever Prince put on the radio. But I didn't know his albums like I know other bands' albums. I know Purple Rain, and I know the one after that. But uh, that was it after that. I think like in 90, I tapped from Prince. You know, do I feel... Yes. I can't imagine what Prince's family and his friends feel like. People who really knew him. Not those bullshit people that go on extra and tell you lies, you know. That's the worst part of death. That's the part of death that destroys me. The fucking bullshit you got to put up with and fucking people talking. You know, who the fuck are you? How does he know you? What the fuck are you talking about? But, you know, it's accepted. You know what I'm saying? It's like putting R.I.P. on your Twitter. Stop. Don't make me go over there and get you canceled. <laughs> what is canceled from what? I don't know. I'm just talking shit here. Fucking Lisa, I am. I'm, I'm nine stars in. You're not nine stars in. Maybe seven. Who's counting? I'm counting. What do you think? I don't have no edibles in my system from last night or the day before or the day before. You know I'm a fucking <laughs> horse of death. I ain't got time for this shit. What the fuck? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to you too. What are you saying? What are you apologizing for? You never apologize. You're I have my, no idea. You're my fucking family. You never fucking apologize. And that's it. I can't really believe old Benjamin left. I love it. Listen, this is just another feather in our cap. You gotta... <laughs> I'll never forget, it was 1984. Should I put the camera on his chair when you say this? It was 1984, and uh, North Bergen people were getting a bad reputation. There was a bar called Corky's at the time. It had switched governments. It was called Gregory's Seven Day Weekend. And I gotta tell you something. Looking back at that bar, it, it just became a cocaine store. At at one fit thirty in the morning on a Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Tuesday, if you just went in that car, if you went in that bar with a camera, and you put it on, and you could have sold that show today. If there was forty people in there, forty of them's jaw were going from side to side, smoking cigarettes. You couldn't hear from the fucking bar. You couldn't, you know. What's the point of my story? I have no fucking idea. Like, the Gregory Seven Day Weekend. It could be a TV show. Uh-oh. Maybe he's back, Owen Benjamin. Maybe he just went for a walk in the neighborhood. Said, fuck it, let me just go for a walk and walk it off. And when you were a kid, you got kicked in the fucking stomach. <laughs> Your teacher would say, walk it off, <laughs> cocksucker. Yeah. I just hope he's okay. Yeah, I'm sure he's fine. I'll call him after this is over. We're getting the fuck out of here anyway. What else we got to do tonight, Lee? Remind me. Remind me. We got to read some fucking ads here. As usual, my main people over at Nature Box. Listen. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Nature Box, dedicated to making smart, delicious, snack, and easy. You deserve better than high fructose, corn syrup, potato chips, and all that shit. Nature Box snacks taste delicious without any high fructose, corn syrup, trans fat, MSG, artificial colors, sweeteners, or flavors. None of that crap. Nature Box makes finding a range of options from healthy to indulgent to easy. They combine unique flavors with ingredients you can pronounce to create great snacks you may not want to share with nobody. From sriracha roasted cashews to the peanut butter nom noms. Are you kidding me or what? Nature Box has over a hundred seriously delicious options to choose from, all delivered right to your door. That's the beauty of this. And you'll never get bored with Nature Box snacks because every single month they release new snacks to choose from. Like uh, the chocolate nom, the dark cocoa nom noms, delicious. They move the plantains. I didn't see the plantains, but you know me. I'm a sucker for the salt and pepper lentil loops. That's how I roll. Or the garlic bread cheese chips. Anyway, don't worry about that. Let's start with this. 
Say goodbye to weird mystery ingredients and start snacking confidently with Nature Box. Go to naturebox.com slash Joey to get 50% off your first box. I'm telling you, this is good shit. Go to naturebox.com right now. Go to naturebox.com slash Joey and get right snacks for 2016. You want to look good? You're two months away from putting a bikini on. Your little pussy's going to be hanging out. You don't want no blubber hanging over. Who's going to fucking eat that thing? One last time. That's naturebox.com slash Joey for 50% off your first box of delicious, high-quality snacks sent directly to your motherfucking doorstep. You understand me? I also want to welcome Dots, uh, Dots Susara Geese. They got hemp gear, high-quality functional gear, hemp textile. It's like fucking cotton mixed. They got towels. They got fighter geese. They got bags. They got hooded sweatshirts. Do me a favor. Got, go to datsusara.com right now and look at the fine selection of stuff they got. They got two beautiful geese, men and women, fucking beautiful, all right? They also sponsor EBI and one and all. Listen, last week I flew from Indianapolis and Tuesday night I went to the comedy zone. And on the way out, some black dude came up to me. He looked familiar. Interesting. And he had a white girlfriend, and he had another buddy with him. And we took a few pictures. In the middle of all this, he says, you know who she is? And I go, no, I don't. And he goes, she's like this thing with vapor pens. And all of a sudden, she goes, give it to him. And he takes out a vapor. He puts on a new pen. He takes a hit. She takes a hit. And I took a hit. Do you know, as I was driving away, I could feel a tingle in my throat. Motherfucker. I went home, I inhaled 6,000 milligrams of vitamin C just to sleep it, you know what I'm saying? I drank some water so my heart wouldn't tap, and I took two fucking of those pills, shroom tax. I also took two before I flew and two when I tapped down, because you always got to take care of yourself when you fly. I drank a bunch of water. I felt something for a few days. I felt something Wednesday. I caught myself sleeping in the afternoon Wednesday. And I couldn't figure out what it was. It was that I was going over something. Again, I inhaled vitamin C. I took some more shroom tech. It finally hit me Friday night. Saturday morning, I had a little bit. By the time I got off stage, the county store was gone. Shroom tech was the way to go. You want shroom tech? You want shroom tech sport? You want shroom tech immune? You got to go to onnit.com right now. While you're there, take a look at fucking Alpha Brain. While you're there, take a look at the hemp protein. Take a look at the shit. Read the ingredients. See how hard Aubrey works for you motherfuckers. If there's something you like, go to the box and press in. Church. Boom! Get 10% off your first order delivered right to your door. It's that easy. I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up your ass because I don't have to. Alpha Brain, you don't like it. It don't work for you. You get 100% money back guarantee and they don't want the product back. That's the type of confidence they got in their shit. Go to alphabrain.com. Go to new... Uh, on it.com, go to the box and press in Church. and get 10% off. I want to thank Nature Box. I want to thank On It. And I want to thank Datsusara.com, the best geese in the business. I mean, there's some great geese out there, but this is a spectacular gee, lightweight. It feels great. Go to Datsusara right now and look at the fine selection of geese they got, all right? That's it. I want to thank my man Owen Benjamin. We fucking tried. We tried. He came here and dabbled with the fucking King of Swing. And his main goomba, Lisa, yeah, and this is what goes down. Ookie Spooky's watching. You know, you can't, you know, when Ookie Spooky's watching, you can't come in here if you haven't taken your vitamins. It, no. You can't do it. Who, who's that? Maybe his wife. Now, who, who, who's going to bother us? You know what I'm saying? We got the world by the balls, Lisa, yeah. We'll be back Wednesday. What do you got planned for tomorrow, Lee? Tomorrow I have a... Uh Hopefully, life in neutral with Johnny Rock, and then um, an everyday cannabis with uh, my good buddy up there. Look at you, the man of many fucking podcasts. Fine. You like nineteen fucking podcasts. Who's better than you? Anyway, I'll be in Sacramento this weekend, rocking the house with Felicia Michaels, and next weekend I'll be at the Pittsburgh motherfucking Improv. I want to thank Owen Benjamin. I think it's OwenBenjamin.com. Whatever. He's a great kid, man. These stars are fucking brutal. Trust me, he's not the first one to tap out. And I want to thank my main man, Lee Syed. I want to thank you guys for listening. Have a great week, and thank you for the love and support. Uncle Joey, 
out. I'll see you motherfuckers on Periscope this week. Stay black.